guys. Glad to be here to talk to you about the future of orthopedic care, which is gonna be stem cells. Well, I don't know about you, but when I think about orthopedic surgery, I think about going under the knife. It, it horrifies me. You know, I'm scared to death of, of doing any surgeries like that. I might be biased because I see all the patients that you know, do poorly after these surgeries, uh, but this is not something I, I would want to do, and this is what I want to prevent my patients from having to go through. And the reason is, is Orthopedic surgery, you might think, is, the, is a fix for some of these problems. But if we really look at the evidence behind a lot of these surgeries, probably more than half of the common orthopedic surgeries are either not helpful or not indicated. These are common things like knee meniscal surgeries, the clean out surgeries that you hear about, shoulder surgeries, back fusions. All these things we've probably heard about don't have really good evidence that they actually help. And you're thinking, well, you know, surgery should be the fix for these problems, right? Not so fast, nope. I'm gonna tell you how we can do this by healing you with you. And I'm in my best Captain America voice, the power is yours. <laughs> and so I think the current orthopedic model is kind of broken. So in the US, we have a few minutes to spend with patients. We gotta quickly put them in a treatment algorithm. It's not personalized care. Um, and if physical therapy and the different things that try to help people recover don't help, then you're left with masking the symptoms with drugs, steroid injections that can actually cause more harm than good, even though they temporarily might help with pain. We got putting Band-Aids on these problems. And surgery, we can see, is not always the answer. But have no fear, guys. We're going to help save this field, and the answer is with stem cells. So when you think about stem cells, when you hear stem cells, it brings up some emotions. Maybe it's you're scared or apprehensive, or maybe it's exciting. Uh, maybe you think, oh, what about that embryonic stuff? Isn't that controversial? It's lots of different stem cells, but what I'm talking about today is the stem cells that come from our own bodies. We call it autologous stem cells. And stem cells are part of a broader field I like to call regenerative medicine, which enhances your body's ability to heal itself. So what the heck are stem cells? What are these guys? Stem cells are like cells that want to stay young. They haven't decided what they want to be when they grow up. They're like a forever teenager. Your brain cells, you know, they, they're brain cells, they stay brain cells. The liver cells, they stay liver cells. Stem cells are found throughout our entire bodies and they can actually turn into different cell types. They can turn into muscle or tendon or bone or different types of cells. They're also highly responsible for our healing mechanisms. So as we get older, every single part of our body has stem cells, but if we chronically injure them or have wear and tear as we get older, you, get, you deplete those stem cells. They also work in the healing response like a construction worker, like a general contractor. So if you have a problem in your house, you call a contractor, they assess the situation and assign tasks. That's how stem cells work. They're not always just turning in the tissue, which they can do, but they immediately stimulate other cells to do their job and clean up this mess and repair this type of damaged tissue. And how we get stem cells to the areas they need to be is just as important as the stem cells themselves. You can't just put stem cells anywhere. You have to precisely place them in an area of injury. It's just like if a mailman just dropped your letters off in your zip code rather than right at your house. And so how we do that is we use ultrasound and x-ray, these advanced imaging modalities, precisely to put these stem cells where they need to be. And usually this is done with just injections of needles instead of scalpels and big time surgeries. So this is less downtime, less recovery periods, and everything else that you can go along with surgery. Let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. So this is a patient that's torn the ACL. I'm gonna show you the MRI up here. Uh, and if you ever heard of a patient getting an M, uh, ACL tear, just like your favorite basketball player, maybe in Canada, a soccer player, uh, and they, that's a direct go to surgery, don't pass, go, don't collect $200, there's no other way to fix this problem. Well, I hate to argue with the surgeons, but not always the case. So this person here, this is an MRI, this is a thigh bone, this is a tibia. In between these dashed lines should be a dark line going through, which would be the ACL ligament. You can see this looks pretty like messed up, right? Three months after having precise injection of stem cells placed into that ACL, that ligament is starting to look a little darker, starting to get some stripes coming through. Six months later, a little bit better. And 11 months later, that ACL pretty much looks almost like a normal ACL. So we actually got in the body to regenerate that ACL. 
And instead of with surgery where you're in downtime with crutches and a lot of pain and the rehab is pretty slow, this person is going to have a couple of days of some soreness and swelling. They're going to get back to regular activity pretty quickly. They're going to go through a rehab, but they're going to be able to return to sports usually a lot quicker than surgery. They also have the advantage that when you have surgery, they basically rip out the old ligament, put in a new one at a weird angle, and so the knee still doesn't always feel the same. This person gets to keep all their own equipment without having a replacement. Here's a, another example. Who heard that, that sciatica stuff, right? The, the weird pain going down the leg. Well, that's usually caused by a disc getting pinched in the back or something like that. Uh, the discs are like a jelly donut that sit between the bones in the back. The jelly's the fluid, and if it gets smashed, the fluid sticks out in the back, or you can have a tear in that donut, and the nerves run right there where that disc might be sticking out and cause some irritation. So this person on their MRI, uh, they, this is looking through the body. This circle here is the disc. These little black dots are where the nerves are. This disc is sk sticking out, irritating this nerve, and it has a little white area that we see on this picture from the side also. That's a tear in that donut part of the disc, causing a lot of pain and some irritation. This person had precise injections directly into that disc, and then six months later, we don't see that white area. It's a little, lot smaller here, and that disc bulge is actually receded. So we've helped this patient get back to activity and function without a major surgery. The surgery fix for this is to fuse that area, and after that, you know, even if that helps, which is plus or minus 50-50, that person's gonna develop problems with the disc above and below that and have to have more surgeries and more problems. So all this sounds miraculous, right? This is great. Um, this is just a couple examples of how stem cells can help. And I, I never cease to be amazed in how uh, the stem cell therapy works in many patients. But it's not magic pixie dust. You just can't sprinkle it anywhere you want, and you can't fix every single disease. So there's a lot of training, and there's uh, good candidates and bad candidates for this type of therapy. So it's not for everybody, but it can help many people. But what we see, especially in America, is that since stem cells right now are newer, uh, they're not covered by insurance, so this amount of pocket costs, clinics look at this as a, a way to, a quick scheme to make money, or they think that it's easy to learn, and so they just take a couple weekend courses and just pop up with a stem cell clinic. So if you're looking into this type of treatment, you just want to be careful and make sure you do the due diligence and the research to check on what's the experience level of that clinic. Are they telling you, are you a good, fair, or poor candidate, or does your credit card work only? And this is the type of things you want to look for. They're doing research. You know, what are their particular outcomes? For instance, I'm, I'm at the place where we've done this longer than anyone, so we collected data for 12 years, and so what is the muscle? Are, you know, do stem cells work or not? And the good thing is that stem cells are safe. You know, the big concern is that, you know, are stem cells going to turn to cancer since they can turn to anything? Adult stem cells don't really work that way. We studied this for 12 years. We published a paper on 2,000 plus patients that have shown that stem cells are safe, doesn't have any many risks because most of these injections are done with needles instead of big surgeries. Here's some more uh, of data. So this is a, a, a study for the knee arthritis. Uh, this is severe knee arthritis uh, treated with either physical therapy or the stem cell group. The stem cell group is in blue and the therapy group is in red. And we can see this is just a functional scale where the stem cell group is outperforming the exercise group. These are pain scores on this graph showing that it's less pain in the stem cell group over time versus the exercise group. And this is more data on knee problems in general, knee arthritis, meniscal tears knee ligament injuries treated with stem cells, and this is patient reported, so it's not biased by the doctors, it's saying what percentage improve you are. So we can see over time, patients are improving for the knee. We'll see a similar pattern for the shoulder, for shoulder injuries, labral tears, tendon tears, shoulder arthritis, patients are getting better. The hip, the hip, hip arthritis, labral tears, all these things we see patients are reporting improvements over time and maintaining that. We see this going up to 48 months or so. Foot and ankle, similar patterns. You know, so we got the evidence to show that this is working today. Not in the future, but right now, this stuff is working. Also, we say, well, you know, if I got severe arthritis, I probably need a, a knee replacement. And sometimes you might be right, and other times you might be wrong. Uh, if you got severe hip or knee arthritis, we took a group of patients that had a surgeon. We had a surgeon. He did knee replacements, hip replacements, and then luckily he conformed and started doing stem cell treatments, saving his patients. But he wanted to study this and compare. So 
took a group of patients that had hip arthritis. The light group is the stem cell group. The dark group is the surgery group. And you can see the stem cell groups afterwards are doing similar or even a little bit better than the replacement groups for both the hip and the knee. So this stuff works even compared to surgeries. This is our data for some of that sciatic. This is not using stem cells, but another type of regenerative treatment. Comparing the typical, if you, uh, if you have low back, that sciatic pain, if physical therapy doesn't work, so a lot of times we want to inject you with steroids. So we wanted to compare if you get that steroid injection versus doing some of the regenerative medicine we do for the back to treat that, to heal that area, what are the outcomes like? And we can see in the blue is our treatment versus steroid group, and they're doing better at three and six months out. So we've got the evidence to show that this stuff helps out right now today, but this is going to be the future. So in conclusion, this is, this is what we want to be like well until we get 70, 80. We want to be able to do the things we want to do. We want to be able to have fun. We don't want to have injuries derail us and prevent us from enjoying sports or activity or traveling, or even just day-to-day -day activities. You know, many people have, you know, wear and tear of their bodies over time. It's better to be proactive and treat these things early. But even now, we can treat some of the more serious problems that you thought you needed surgery for with stem cells, because that's the future for orthopedic care. I estimate that probably in the next coming decades, we'd be able to replace 70% of the most common performed orthopedic surgeries by using these type of regenerative treatments instead. This still is a young and early field, it takes a lot of training to do this, and so more and more we're going to see more doctors do this. We just want to make sure the doctor is doing it right, has good experience, uh, is not just trying to take advantage of you, It's not trying to say you can treat every single disease A to Z and everybody is a good candidate, okay? So I'm so excited to be here and I'm so happy to share this information with you. Uh, I use these treatments on myself. I treat things early. I've had at least about 10 things treated. Nothing major, but you know, this is what keeps me going, keeps me young, keeps me doing splits, right? <laughs> like, thank you guys. <laughs> Do some splits. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, you know, this is a, this is a very patient-centered uh, um, technique. Uh, you're the one taking the stem cells, you're putting them back in, you're doing all the imaging, but ultimately I think everyone in here is like, ooh, geez, that's not for me, that looks like it hurts. <laughs> right? Like, yes. well, not the splits, but the stem cells. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'd like to bring out one of your patients um, who's from Vancouver. Yep. You're actually the only person from Vancouver who's actually gone to Denver to do this, <laughs> right? I believe so. I believe so. At that's least the first. Apparently that's At least the, the first. Yeah, yes. and not the last. Um, so I'd like to bring out um, Suman Bakshi. Um, welcome, Suman. Thank you for having me. So you made it. You survived? I, I survived. Cool. Um, I think the first question everybody's going to want me to ask is, did it hurt? Well, yeah, a little, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I did actually a little <laughs> bit because more of the hurt was my mental, my anxiety around it all. Like I was like, sure. I need Valium. Like I just need <laughs> Valium because this is scary for me. Uh, but the truth is it actually really didn't hurt. Yeah. No. yeah. A lot of people, because you get stem cells from the bone marrow or you can get it from fat. It's more evidence for bone marrow, so we do more of that. And people are terrified because it sounds really scary. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's more of an anxiety provoking experience. So if you relax the patient and give them some medicine, they usually do better and it's usually not a big deal. Yeah. So yeah. Wh why stem cells? You look like a perfectly well and healthy woman. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, in some chronic pain scenario, what happened? So, there, you know, this is the thing about chronic pain and or injuries, right, and um, is it's invisible. People can look at me and she's like, oh, she's fit, she's healthy, there's nothing wrong with her. But the truth is, I had a car accident in June, on June 10th of 2015, and um, it changed my life. And people can look at me and go, oh, she's fine, and I thought, okay, after the shock, let me go do the, what my doctor recommends. Physical therapy, um, ch chiropractic, massage, all the things that typically would work um, if, you, you know, depending on how injured you were. I, of course, assume I'm not that bad. I look fine. I'm thinking I look fine too, right? But I wasn't fine. I had so much trouble doing anything. I mean, me standing here today in heels <laughs> is a big deal <laughs> for me. I couldn't, like, you know when you sleep and you, you fall asleep on your back and your legs just fall out naturally? Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. It hurt so much. Couldn't sleep on my right side, couldn't sleep on my left side. My hip was really hurting. You didn't it was, sleep it was for years. Killing. I didn't sleep for a year, almost a year and a half. 
I mean, and I was like the walking dead, really. And um, after about, it took me in the system, of course, about 10 months to get an MRA of my hip, which then was able to tell me what was going on. I had a labral tear. So that's basically the tissue I, or the, t the labral holds your leg together and where everything rotates in your hip. Mm -hmm. So that's what the labral is. And so I had a labral tear and I was absolutely devastated. I've never had any health, physical issues like that in my life. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do about this? Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, and I thought surgery was the option. So I did consult an orthopedic surgeon here in Vancouver and learned that it wasn't the option for me. And I then just, you know, a doctor of mine recommended I talk to this amazing <laughs> man over here. And, and that would have been in June of last year. Yep. So not long ago did I have my first conversation with uh, the Santana Schultz Clinic and Dr. Pitts. Um, I studied it. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, it's, it's emotional for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I took a risk. And it paid off. Yeah. So you're signing a year. How long has it been, Dr. Pitt, since last? September treatment? was my. Yeah, first it's been at least treatment. a year since our first. Treatment. At least a year. Okay. First so let, let, was in let's September. say let's say you were like a, a nine out of ten pain yeah. dysfunction. What's where are you at today? Okay, so I want to say we're just talking about my hip. I had a whole lot of other things going on. Sure did. Yeah. And so I've had I've been treated head to toe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, back to front, <laughs> side to side. <laughs> 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 um, I would say that. Uh, you know, my physical health fluctuates and there are a lot more good days than bad days. And I, if, you know, if he's Superwoman, I mean, sorry, sorry, Superman, I'm almost Wonder Woman. <laughs> so I'm really happy to say there's been a significant improvement in the last year. And I've been to Colorado three times and, uh, so far. And there's a little, little ways to go still. But uh, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be happier uh, about my progress. And because so he saved my life, like, saved my life. Dr. Pitts? Yes. Yeah, amazing. This is um, a really sort of it, an inspirational yeah. story um, because there's so many people, and I know a lot of them out there, their shoulders bugger, their knees bugger, and they used to be able to do things uh, that they yeah. can't do anymore. Yeah. Um, so, Dr. Pitts, what does Suman's journey forward look like? How many times do you need to see her? Is this like, is she done? Right, what yeah, so uh, what we do is more personalized medicine, so it's all dependent on that particular patient. So this is in the same scenario for everyone else. Since Suman was in a car accident, had multiple injuries, you know, first focus was the hip, mm -hmm. that's pretty much better, but she had multiple injuries around the neck, the thoracic area, the low back, knee, all these other things. So we've been kind of teasing through all that and treating, and she's making great progress. We probably maybe need to do one or two more treatments just depending on how she does. But I'm always a do something, reassess, do something, reassess. Yeah. I only want to do as much as we need to to get the person where they need to be and that's it. No more. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Suman, mm -hmm. congratulations you. on conquering your fears <laughs> and getting your body and your movement back and thank your you. health back. Uh, Suman, thank you for sharing your thank story. You. Dr. Pitts, wonderful stuff. Thank Keep you. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, thank you guys. Excellent. Thank Cheers. you. Yeah.